You can't say Julian Green has the easiest job in Chicago, but he does have the most enviable. Green is the mouthpiece of the Cubs. Technically, it's Vice President of Communications and Community Affairs. Green is the guy who lets the world into the world of Wrigley Field. And what a time to be that guy. Yeah, there are thousands of people that would probably like to work for the Chicago Cubs. So I, I do feel special. Um, I do, and I don't take this for granted. Green is, through no fault of his own, a Sox fan by birth. He grew up on the South Side. I think every kid remembers when their first time their dad or their parents took them to a, to a baseball game. And so I have fond memories of going to Comiskey Park, growing up as a, a youngster. Green says when he realized his height wasn't keeping up with his own ambitions to be a player, it was on to his secondary loves of broadcasting and music at Alabama A&M University. I was a young kid who was interested in getting into television, came back to Chicago. You know, when Jerry Springer and Jenny Jones and Oprah and you had all these shows, I would go around to the television shows peddling my resume, trying to get on board as a production assistant. But Green wound up in public relations, eventually working for the city, and getting to know a future campaign kingpin, David Axelrod. Uh, who told me about uh, a, a senator with a really funny name and uh, had some funny ears uh, and said, hey, look, you know, there's uh, this guy I'd like to connect you with. He's making a run for United States Senate, and I think uh, you two would be uh, really great together uh, as his uh, press secretary. After several years of working with the man who would become President Obama, Green says he got Obama's blessing to move on. Spending about eight years in politics, you know, really great positions, positions of influence, positions of power, but really didn't make a lot of money. <laughs> Green went on to public relations with Miller Brewing Company in Milwaukee. But six years ago, the new owners of the Cubs, the Ricketts family, made him an offer he couldn't refuse. He was getting called up to the majors. That uh, being in sports was something that would be a great fit for me. And so getting the call uh, from the Chicago Cubs who wanted to talk to me about coming on board, it certainly, yes, it was a dream come true. During home games, Green is constantly prowling Wrigley keeping in touch with employees, fans, media from all over the world, and his staff of five. He's also in charge of the Cubs on social media, but his job is far from what's just happening on the field. He is the voice of the organization, whether they are winning the division or haggling with the city over neighborhood development. We're restoring a 100-year-old uh, ballpark, right? We're building new facilities in the Dominican Republic. We have rebuilt a spring training facility. Uh, there's so many different things that are happening in terms of trying to put this organization uh, on a successful and sustainable pace for the next hundred years. It's just an exciting time and so it's almost like a, a hundred year old startup company, a blank canvas. When Green first started, the Cubs were still, well, the Cubs, but now... So I think it's unique because we're just, you know, one of those uh, stories in American sports that people are rooting for. Green admits that's also what makes his job tougher these days. He can't say yes to all the media requests that have come pouring in. But he does his best, and like any PR pro, you can't ask Green any question without him steering the conversation back to the home team. So a lot of people hitting you up for free tickets? Uh, oh my goodness, you know, you hear from people that you haven't heard from for in five years <laughs> wanting to get tickets to the tickets to the ball game. But let me say this, tickets are still available on Cubs.com, so come by. There you go. For Rose Phillips Online, I'm Andy Rosegen.